Ladies and gentlemen, raise your hands if you want incredible relationships, not just yet, if you want incredible relationships with your family, your friends, your co-workers, love interests. Anybody? Nobody? Okay, well, I guess not the rest of you. And raise your hands if you want to lead rewarding and happy lives. Just like a little bit. Okay, well don't be so optimistic now. And I want to, um, and I want to ask you, raise your hands if you think that any of that is easy. Okay, we have a few more optimists in the room. So to perhaps change the rest of the room's mind, and also to reinforce uh, everyone else, I want to equip you with a few tools to help strengthen the quality of your relationships and ultimately increase your levels of fulfillment by affirming the people in your lives, by helping the people that you know, and considering the positives of every situation, while also still being realistic. And how many of you are with me? How many of you are with me? Uh, <laughs> Alright, so let's get started. First things first, if we want affirmation of our strengths and of our contributions, we must get in the habit of giving it ourselves. Sure, compliments from strangers are nice, and of course we value the acknowledgments of people that we respect and people that we admire. And I'll give you the example of a former co-worker of mine that I was working with. She was very hardworking, and we were paired up a number of times to work together on projects, but she was not terribly nice. I would come into work, and I would say hello, and the best I would get, mm-hmm. <laughs> and this happened for months, so I made it my mission to try and see if I could talk to her, if I could get more than a sentence out of her. And I, would, I started by complimenting her, and complimenting the things that she did. So I would say something and she would either say thank you or mm-hmm. And then eventually I decided, all right, I, I feel like maybe I should give up. And by that time, I was going off to another job. And I had only told a small pool of friends at the workplace that I was leaving when just before I left, she stopped me and she had said, Someone told me you're leaving. Is that true? And I said, well, yes, it is. And she said, I wanted to say that it was really nice working with you. <laughs> and she told me that she thought I was a good person. And she even wished me luck wherever I went. And I was really surprised, because I didn't expect any of this, and I wasn't trying to be nice to her so that she could be nice to me back. But by feeding value into her effort and to, into her contributions, she gave it back to me. And so, I find that aside from just giving verbal acknowledgement to other people, there are other ways of helping other people understand that we care without the use of words. Specifically, by performing acts of service, we relieve the burden of other people. And this reinforces that we care about them. Before I came to Almaty, I had a lot on my plate. My cousin's engagement party was the day before my flight, and I had so much to do. I was her right-hand man, or woman, and she had asked me to help her put together all of the decorations, to pick up the cake, to drop off the flowers at the venue, and I was running and I was sweating, 
and I hadn't even remembered to brush my teeth, to put on my deodorant, and I <laughs> went out the door and did all of this stuff, and I hadn't even packed yet. And I needed to do so many other things before I left, including the laundry. And at home, we had so many of our cousins staying with us, so I asked one of them if they could help me fold them while I went out and did my errands. So I went out and did my errands, I came back, and the scent of freshly washed laundry wafted over. And I was so happy to see a pile of laundry sitting on the living room sofa. But as I went to go collect some of my clothing, I noticed on the side there was a pile of socks that had been left scattered and unfolded. And I saw it and I realized that they were just my socks. And my, my cousin, who is only 17 years old and has the attention span of a goldfish, probably, I assume, just left and, you know, was not necessarily singling out my small footed socks. But when I saw that, something in me felt so very, I suppose, emotional. And I felt like my contribution, my effort, the things that I was trying to do to help the other people in my family, somehow none of it was going to come back to me and that no one else was looking out for me. So I went to my mom's room and very quietly I sobbed on the bed until my mom, who had come back from her own errands, she, she came over to me and saw that I was crying and I told her that I couldn't leave to come on this trip feeling like I was not in control, feeling like everything was running loose. And she said, oh, but you forgot your socks. And she had already folded them. And it's small. Socks are so small. And they shouldn't matter. But it did to me. So without having said anything, to me, that meant a lot. And it also helps to see the good in all things, too. When we think about the positives or the strengths of any either person or situations, it calms us down when we can see a lot of negatives. And I'm not talking about necessarily being blindly optimistic, nor about denying faults or those negatives, but I think I want to tell you a little bit about why I came to Kazakhstan. So my father has been living here on business for about five years now. And while that may sound ordinary, at home, it's a bit of a different situation. I am one of the only few, I am one of the few people in my house that has a driver's license. And I not only worked full time up until very recently, and so did everyone else, but it was kind of a struggle to be able to do everything without the help and presence of my father. Not only did we have to take care of so much around the house with my parents' assets, but also we had to learn how to live with each other without someone else at home, without someone else's help. For example, I became my mother's therapist, <laughs> which I hadn't anticipated before. And I also became the person that she argued with the most. And things, there were moments that were really rough. There were moments where I felt like this, I was very angry with what was happening with our family, the way that we had kind of configured our time apart. And I had very mixed feelings about coming here because the idea of this country of this city, Almaty, this whole place, represented to me a kind of disintegration of what our family was supposed to not be. But when I came here and I spent time with my father, 
a lot of that anger kind of melted. And I saw how hard he was working. Not that I didn't know that before, but I saw that it was a struggle for him as well to be apart from his family too. And aside from that, I have met so many, so many interesting and smart and ambitious people here. Not only outside this club, but of course within this club. And I have been so honored and blessed with having been the recipient of the kindness of so many strangers. And so, through all of this, I want to propose to you all tonight to adopt an attitude of gratitude. Why? You already know. But how? I want to give you three tools. One, I want everyone for the next 24 hours, or within the next 24 hours, to compliment someone's strengths or contribution. And please, be specific. Two, I would like for you to offer to help at least one person. And three, for the next 24 hours, do not complain. I see a lot of you smiling. I know this is going to be tough. And if you can do it, I want you to extend it to 48 hours. And if you can do that, I want you to try 72 hours. Do it for a week. Maybe wash the dishes. Maybe be nice to a coworker who maybe isn't going to be nice to you back. Maybe fold some socks. And even though it's so small, and perhaps you think it won't matter, but when it comes to the atmosphere of gratitude that you create for yourself and for other people, trust me, it will. Thank you very much.